Shalom. Please and foremost, want to give our praises to Rabbi Hal Bar Shem Yerushai, Bar Shem Rakar Kodesh. That's in the Yishin Hebrew to sell praises to Yahweh in the name of Yerushai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Yahweh is the correct name for the Heavenly Father, who the world ignored the call of Jehovah God or Yahweh, and His Son's true name in the Hebrew is Yerushai, who the world ignored the call of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Rishai. The true name for the God of the Bible in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And his son's true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. One give the wonders unto our elders and apostles of great millstone, and shalom to our brothers and more, push this world in sincerity and in truth, then that we leave. Shalom. Alright, um, this lesson, numerous dietitians entitled to uh, resist the temptation. You know, basically, I was on the rodeo, and um, saw this sign here on a phone book, you know. So put your phone down, resist the temptation. You know, and, um, was just thinking upon, um, the point of resist the temptation, you know, because um, we in the time now when the devil uh, scripts are great about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, you know, he's also known as a tempter, right? And um, was us meditating upon how all things will be basically tempting, right? Even now, and even more so, while we go to um, enter the hour of temptation and the final hour, right? And um, one more, what do you call it? No. Whatever them call him, something here. Uh, this is like a meme or whatever. It says, all of, basically, it says, of all the enemies I have faced, my flesh still remains the strongest of all. Though deceitful and powerful, it's not immoral. So I fight to the death. Fight. I fight. You know? And I'm not so serious because what scripture says, oh no, I'm going to skip this one real quick. Go to Sirach or Ecclesiastic because the fourth chapter. On twenty eight, it says, Strive for truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for, for thee. Right? So, um, it's about fighting unto the death when I'm um, wearing basically corruptible bodies right now. And um, the, the devil, you know, is the, the tempter, right? Go it about as um, let's get that precept right now. Um, first Peter 5, verse 8 to be sober, be vigilant. And um, will you be sober and vigilant? I want to look up the word sober. Let's get it real quick. Be sober from the Greek Strong's G 3525. Nafo. Nafo. It says to be sober, to be calm and collected in spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, circumspect, and um, we're dispassionate. Go back to basically um, dispassionate, non influenced by strong emotion, and so able to be rational and impartial. So, when we're not influenced by um, strong emotions, you know, those are um, temptation. Those um lust, what they what the flesh lust after, right? We are able to be as be in the spirit, and being in the spirit is what as um. Let's get that real quick. Uh, John six sixteen. It says it is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. So the spirit, when you have mean remain in the spirit, is when you basically remain in the words, like you're walking towards what the word says, or the word of what the scriptures. So when you go back to um first Peter five verse eight, so be sober, be vigilant, right? So be common, collective in spirit, not basically be um you were supposed to be dispassionate, not uh, influenced by emotions, right? Walking in the spirit. Be vigilant, you see, basically um, observing everything. And um, so you even observe when it's actually you're being tempted, right? You know, whatever situation where we know, this looks like a test, you know, because that's wrong. And um, this is the right thing to do when you know when you're in the spirit. Because your adversary, the devil, right, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Because the devil have a bid, you know, the most high, um, let's get that real quick is uh 
two of one and let me see all right let's read to one verse six job one and six now there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and Satan came also among them. So Satan, I get cry from the spiritual demon Satan, that is. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the hurt, and from walking up and down in it. So Satan said, You know what I mean? I'm going to go and do some business. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the hurt, a perfect and upright and an upright man, one that feared Yahweh and eschewed evil, or basically hate evil. Um, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do a job fear Yahweh for naught? Has not thou made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, which thine hand walked with Satan, the left hand, and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and it's that brush, Job possessions. When we go to chapter two, we basically get permission to brush Job himself, but do not um, kill him. You know, so he's a tempter. We are placed in situations to basically um test of our character, test of our faith. You know, we'll believing if we're going to basically give in the desires of the flesh, or we're going to basically um hold out and believe in our power, right? As um same thing with the Awash um happened. This is um Matthew chapter four verse uh, three. So and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the, of the power of Yahweh. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. So this is basically how she caught the demon with um with precept and them coming to your mind, the thoughts, right, is coming to your mind. I say, yeah, man, do this, I do that. And we'll have to rebuke the thoughts, and filter it through the scriptures as well, and then rebuke the evil thoughts. Verse um, 6, And say it unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. So the temple now has to a quote precept in my mind. Yeah, man, you can't do this, come in by precepts of that. Right? It says, And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Yahweh shall said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You know, and he basically paid him again, you know, Yahweh shall rebuke him. And the scripture said, What the devil leave it him for a season? Time will come back, <laughs> right? Because the fight is actually unto death, as scripture says, Strive for truth unto death. Right, so the more we enter into the time, yeah, the more we're going to basically get tempted. But we have to resist the temptation, right? resist the devil. I'm right, going to get that principle as well. Let's finish this. Uh, so back to um, 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may divorce him. I'll seek whom he can win the bet with. You know, I'm not trying to win it. Oh, <laughs> now to this, to this, to that, and I'm bet saying give up. Right? But um, the elect is actually sealed um, for um, salvation, so they will not give in. Verse 9, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So it can be the evil, let me give you a quick example. Um, let's say the case that you don't, um, you're financially a struggle, you know, and um, you know what they do? Put some bandula business in front of you. I'm right? so bandula mean like some illegal shit, or which you know we're not supposed to engage in those things. Because we don't want financial struggle, right? My temple, for example, you don't have, um, let's say you don't have a wife or whatever, you know, and um, whatever they push some woman in front of you, and well, sexy and whatever, you're, you're, um, your type of woman will have a man, you know, that's adultery, 
that's a level of temptation. And those are just two examples, right? Where she was a woman supposed to what? Resist steadfast in the faith. And because even our brothers go through it. It's about the power of all grace, verse 10. But the power of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Yahushua Mashiach, after that he had suffer, suffered a while, make you perfect, established, straightened, settled um, you. Uh, okay, this is uh, James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to Yahweh. Resist the devil. Resist the tempter. Right? Resist the temptation. And he will flee from you. Just so Yahushua rebuked the devil. Three times of impeachment and three times of cut him. Right? And then he will go for a season. So he will come back. <laughs> right? It's not like he will go forever. Right? But in the kingdom, we will basically and be perfect. But on this side, we will constantly be test. Right? And now more time we won't feel, you know, but um, more we have to do is, as scripture say, offend less. Right? So submit yourselves, therefore, unto Yahweh, or to Yahweh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When you cut him the precept, you know, you know, you know, go about leave, and then, uh, we can, you know, um, harm, you know, get some more um, harm, you know, and um, some fiery darts, you know, come back again, right? Verse uh, 8, he said, draw nigh to Yahweh, and he will draw nigh unto um, to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahweh, while you shy, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one to another, virgin. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law. You yeah, can just drop it there. Um, I have one more. This is uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you walk in the spirit, yo, you know, basically think it upon what's right from what's wrong. And when you're tempted, you have a filter through the scripture. You'll be dispassionate. All right, so my flesh won this. This is the easy way out. This is my desire. But um, this is the right thing to do. Walk in the street, enter at the street gate. It's about difficulty. It's about suffering. Right? For how about Shem Yoshai? As scripture says, eat it. Um, so we can get that real quick. First Peter 4. In verse um, 1, it says, For as much then as your house shall have suffered for us in the flesh, harm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that had suffered in the flesh had seized from sin that he no longer should live the rest of the, his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of Yahweh. And that's what the world is doing right now. They are just giving in to the flesh. You know, uh, men, my, a man see a next man, woman, yeah, she look good and round up and thing. I'm just feeling into that lust and go basically commit adultery. Women do the same, you know, vice versa, right? And that's how iniquity has been um, increased upon the herd when everybody just giving in to the desires of the flesh, giving in to wickedness. But we um supposed to be the difference um where we strive for righteousness um the nine the the, the, the desires of the flesh. It says um, verse two that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh time his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of Yahweh right what the most I say what the scriptures say right so for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness. Lust, excessive wine, ravelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatry. So at one point we were in the world, you know, keeping all man our foolish. But now we have been brought to the gross liberty of the light of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. We no longer um, seek to full, um, fulfill the, the desires of the flesh, but we seek to fulfill what? The desire of the spirit, right? Where the scriptures are supposed to live. So back to Galatians chapter 5 and verse um, 17. Read about verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Right? So the flesh want the one thing, the spirit want the one thing. That's, that's basically, you know, like in the cartoon, I'm sure like the angel upon one side and the devil upon one side. Those are the thoughts that go through head, eh? Or the angel on the right hand side that tell you what's right, and the devil said, No, man, do this, do this, do that, do this. 
you know, right? But we have to at all times rebuke those, um, resist those temptations, you know, and that's a fight. Last precept of one deck is Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 57. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which men, man that is born upon the earth shall fight, man and woman, and kids. Um, so that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said, but if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Right? So if you're basically overcome to the flesh, desire the temptation, you will be destroyed. But if you resist it, you know what I'm saying, as the scriptures say, all right, this one fall it seven times and get it back up. So at times you're going to give in, you know, scriptures say, um, the creature was made subject unto vanity. You know, but um, the idea, you know, is to be our mindset we're supposed to have is never give up. You know, yeah, we'll drop, yeah, we will we, we'll stumble, right? But constantly get up and fight. Like at the moment you give in to the flesh and say, fuck it, the type of fight is in the go back to the world. That's where you are destroyed. You know, so, but if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. You know, um, for this is the life where Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. And that's a lesson, you know, it's saying those inspired by um, this. So put your phone down, resist the temptation. You know, with phone, you know, as soon as I hear it, um, give um, like a notification, you know, I look on you and say, Well, go on, it's in what you're driving. You know, so it's not good, it's not wise to text and drive or whatever using your phone and drive. You'll be distracted and you can get destroyed. And um, it's the same thing um, when you're in the spirit. You're supposed to have a tunnel vision because the moment you give in to the flesh, you know, that could be hit. You know, your, your demise, your destruction. So you're supposed to what? Resist the temptation. Right? And um, that's a fight for salvation, fight for a life. Right? So um, as um, Paul, Paul tells Timothy, fight the good fight, you know, of faith. And that's resisting all the temptations that's come up in the flesh. And you're not going to get it perfect, believe me. Right? But the idea of a constantly getting up and fight back. You know, giving it all you have. Hope this is was any fun until you go there. Giving all praises to our power. Yahweh, Power Shem, Yahweh Shai, Power Shem, Kakodash. Double us into our elders and apostles of great millstone. Shalom to the full light.